<clears throat> Hi guys, um, just a short stream to have a wee look at some half hold diminished ideas and, and to chat about the half hold diminished scale. Um, I tried to do this yesterday but the sound was terrible, um, something went wrong so I'm hoping this works out a little bit better. I'm probably going to drop some frames but hopefully it won't be, won't be too bad. Um, so yeah, the, the point of this session, chat about the, the half hold diminished skill and, and some of the ideas that we can we can generate from the half hold diminished skill. Um, you know, and I guess just to break the rules a little bit and to maybe look at it from more of a, I mean, what we what, look at what we can sort of construct from that skill in terms of melodic ideas, rather than just looking at it as a skill and generating scale lines. Okay, so um, hopefully this will work out quite well. So first thing we're going to do, chat about the half hold diminished skill. Um, half hold diminished skill is an eight note skill which uh, is symmetrical in nature. So, so what that means is that the intervals between the notes and the way the intervals are constructed makes the scale symmetrical, okay? So if I was to play the scale for you and talk about, so the half hole, the half hole uh, construction means that it's constructed in half steps and whole steps, okay? So if you take the start note of C, for example, in this, this idea, and we just construct half steps and whole steps from that note. Okay, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, right? We get back to the note of C. So what we've played uh, is eight notes, okay? And we'll chat about the the interval of those notes and the, the sort of quality of each of those notes in a second. But that's where the half whole diminished idea comes from. So what that means is, when we play a half step and then go up a whole step, right, we're essentially just playing the same scale, okay, for, from a minor third higher. So it's symmetrical in that respect. We can take the, the half hold on the scale, move it a minor third higher, and we get exactly the same scale, okay. So for this example, we'll, we'll look at the key of C, we'll look at the C major, or the, the root note of C, sorry, uh, and look at all the different ideas and where it comes from. Where, where all the notes come from and the application of each and a solo in context. So if we just look at the notes right, and understand where they come from in terms of structure. So we treat C as the root note, okay? D flat, we call that the flat nine, okay? Um, in relation to the C, okay? So when we go up a whole step from that, we get to the note of E flat, okay? But for the sake of this, we're gonna call it D sharp because it implies a sharp second or a sharp nine um, in relation to the root note. So that's really important, and we'll, we'll chat about enharmonic spellings in a wee second. Go up another half step, we get to E, which is the major third. Okay. A tone higher, we get to G, G flat or F sharp. Okay. We'll, we'll call it F sharp because it implies a sharp four or a sharp 11 um, rather than a flat five because we've got a semitone after that and we get the natural fifth. Okay. Then we go up another tone. We get to A natural, okay, which is the sixth or the thirteenth in relation to C. Another half step, we get to B flat, which is the flat seven. Um, from there, up a tone, we get to the root note, okay. So what that gives us, if we just play those notes in order, we get root, flat second, flat nine, sharp second, sharp nine, major third, sharp eleven, perfect fifth, thirteen or sixth, flat seven. Okay. So it's quite a, quite a quirky sound. Uh, it's designed to be played over dominant chords, which again we'll chat about. Um, yeah. So taking those notes, what we'll do is we'll write them. We'll write them down. We'll put them into Sibelius, and we'll we'll look at ways that we can sort of break that down and, and analyze those notes, if you will. Okay. So if we go over to Sibelius, okay. Now. Let's just write that scale out, okay? So we're starting with the note off C, so we will put that there, okay? And we're just going to say the, write the note names out as we go, um, just so we can see it in relation to to the the musical stave. So we've got C natural, okay? Then we play the flat nine, which is D flat. Then we play sharp nine, okay, which is D sharp. 
then we have the major third, which is E. Good. Then we said the sharp 11, which was F sharp. G natural, okay, which is a perfect fifth. Um, 13, which is A natural. And the flat seven, which is B flat. Okay. So written down, it looks like that. Okay. Now, remember what we were saying, that the symmetrical nature of this scale means that if we were to play the same thing from C, to get those notes, if we were to play the same thing a minor third higher, okay, um, let me just move myself over. Uh, yeah. If we were to play the same thing a minor third higher, we get exactly the same scale, just from a different starting point. Okay, so if we started on C and we played the same thing from the E flat, it's exactly the same notes, okay, just a different permutation if you think of it that way. Um, but it's exactly the same scale. So then from a minor third higher, and then another minor third higher, it's exactly the same scale, okay. So you can start to think now, okay, well, if that's the same scale, um, Four different positions and it's the same scale it means there's only three half whole diminished scales that we can think about okay but anyway okay back to c major so what we can do with this is we're just going to think all the different options in terms of solo and some information that we can dissect from this scale so we have to think of enharmonic spellings here uh, just in order for it to work but once we, we sort of understand that and, and and get to grips with that idea it can make things quite interesting for us so if we start with the note of C, right? Now, if I'm looking at the notes like this, imagine putting them all just in a big mixing pot, and, and if you're improvising, just taking certain notes out um, at any given point, okay? That each of these notes has a fundamental quality, and, and we would use it within a soloing context. So looking at this, what I can see is that the notes of C, E, and G, okay? That gives me a C major triad, okay? So from that, if I just play those notes, C, in that scale, I've got a C major triad. Now, although it doesn't look like that because I'm not playing the one, the three, and the five off the half whole diminished scale, I am managing somehow within the notes that are contained within the scale to bring out that C major triad. And we can see highlighted in blue where those three notes are, okay? So that's quite cool. Then what we can do, right, if we think of the E flat note, okay? the D sharp, sorry, we have to think of the enharmonic spelling, but if I think of the D sharp note, I think of the enharmonic equivalent to that, which is E flat, okay? Now, an E flat major triad has the notes of E flat, G, and B flat, okay? So D sharp, G, B flat, okay? For all intents and purposes, that gives us an E flat triad, or what sounds like an E flat triad. Although it's D sharp and harmonic spelling is E flat, we can see the E flat major triad within that scale. Okay. So what we've got is C major triad and E major E flat major triad. Now, starting on the note of F sharp, okay, which is this one here, we do the same thing. An F sharp major triad has the notes of F sharp, A sharp, and C sharp. But if we think in harmonic spellings, we've got A F sharp. Okay. Instead of A sharp, it's B flat, which is the same thing. Instead of C sharp, it's D flat. Okay, so putting those notes together, we've got an F sharp major triad. Okay. Which is pretty cool. Okay, and in, in the way that we dissect the scale, we can we can get these three major triads. Okay. Then finally, we start on the note of A. Okay, now an A major triad has the notes A, C sharp, and E. Obviously, we're thinking in harmonic spellings. So instead of A sharp, it's D flat. Okay, so we've got A, D flat, C sharp, and the note of E. So we also have an A major triad, which is cool. Okay. So we've got C major, E flat major, F sharp major, back to C major as well. Okay. This gives us a wealth of options for improvising because 
not only can we just think of the scale in a sort of linear fashion, we can actually start thinking of these triads as, as melodic standpoints within our improvisation. Okay. Um, again, maybe I should have said this, maybe a prerequisite for, for diving into this stuff is make sure you understand your triads and, and, and make sure you can sort of play triads in a variety of inversions and, and all that type of thing. It makes it a little bit easier in the long run. But with that in mind, we can now start developing some ideas using these major triads, which we'll, we'll look at in a second. Okay. So what this means, and what I like to do, okay, we've established that the C half hold diminished scale can be repeated in minor thirds along the fretboard. It gives us just the same scale, but in, in different places, okay? So what that means is if I just add some text here, um, we've got C, I like to think of E flat, okay? Um, F sharp and A, right? So if we think of these from the note of C, we get these four different sort of half old minuscules, which all contain exactly the same notes. What that means is there's there's eight other half old minuscules that we've not looked at. Okay, so if we had a start note of F, this is how I like to think about it. A minor third above that is A flat. A minor third above that uh, is <coughs> B. Think of it that way. Um, and a minor third above that is D. Okay, so. If we were to play a half hold diminished scale from the note of F, A flat half hold diminished is exactly the same, B diminished is exactly the same, and D is exactly the same. They're all exactly the same scale, okay? So we've covered A out of the 12 keys or, or diminished scales that we can think of. There are only 12, uh, 12 major keys, okay? So then if we pick a note that we've not looked at yet, we've not played G, we've not played B flat, we've not played D flat, and we've not played from E. So if I just start from G, we have G minor third higher is B flat. Let me just move this up. Uh, G, B flat. From that we have D flat and then landing on E, okay? So what I like to think about is, is categorizing the diminished scale into these three sections, okay? So what that means is if I was playing over some sort of C chord, C altered chord, uh, C dominant chord, sorry, not altered, um, I could think C half hold diminished, I could think E half hold diminished, F sharp or A half hold diminished. Likewise, if I was playing over an F sharp seven, I could think A half hold diminished, C half hold diminished, E flat half hold diminished, okay? Just because of the way they interact, they contain exactly the same notes. Um, so it means you're only really learning three sections or three sort of what I call sections, C section, F section and G section. And within that, just understanding how they're, they're interchangeable. Um, so it's quite cool. It's a good way of, of, of sort of looking at it um, and, and, and developing ideas. Okay. So, so in short, if I'm thinking C7, I was playing over like a groove or whatever, I'm thinking, okay, all my soloing options is C minor pentatonic. Um, you know, blue scale pentatonic, major pentatonic, E minor 7 flat 5 arpeggio. But I'm thinking, in order just to create tension, I've got a C major triad, I've got an E flat major triad, an F triad, F sharp triad, and an A major triad. And I can just superimpose these over the over the, the chord or the vamp or the, the context of whatever I'm soloing and I can just play these triads uh, and it can sound quite cool, okay? So if I put a backing track on, have we listened to this? Um, this is a, just a C7 sort of funky groove thing, okay? Now I'm just going to play each of these triads over the top um, and hopefully you can have a wee listen to how that sounds. Okay. So. This is the scale we're using. If I'm soloing, uh, using sort of C minor pentatonic, C minor pentatonic. I 
I did then is I played F sharp, C, okay. so we can create lines that way just by playing triadically, changing the permutations in the, the, the triad together. So here's C major triad over that. Perfectly well. Here's an E flat triad. Okay. So it's quite funky, very pet it's like using pentatonic over the top of that, that progression. Pretty cool. Uh, F sharp's the next one, so this is almost a tritone sub the progression of a C7. So it can sound quite clashy. So that gives us is this. And then A major, A major is quite cool, but that gives us this 13 flat 9 A major third. So that sounds like this. just at the right time. So, what we can do is, let's look at each triad and, and the extension that that gives us in relation to a C7. Okay. So C major, root third and fifth, that's fine, all right. Now, if we take the E flat triad, what that gives us is E flat, D sharp, which is a sharp nine, the five and the flat seven, okay. F sharp gives us the sharp 11, the flat seven, and the flat nine, okay. And A gives us thirteen uh, flat nine and, and major third, okay. So they all give us different extensions over that chord that we can use, just to give it a little bit more colour and, and, and flavour. Um, so that's quite cool. So it's, it's a nice thing, you know. Um, it's just to know what those extensions are and how they can be used within a solo in context over the chord, okay. So yeah. Um, I hope that's been of use to you. Um, give it a try. See, see what you can come up with. Generate ideas. Uh, make exercises out of it. Um, it all works in minor thirds. It's all symmetrical. All right. So, whatever triad you pick, if we take an E flat triad, okay, um, second inversion, we can just move that shape up a minor third. We get F sharp A very fusion-esque sound, you hear a lot of fusion guys do that. Ah. Uh, F sharp here, up a minor third, we get A, C, E flat, F sharp, okay, C, E, F sharp, A, uh, C, E flat, F sharp. Mix it up as much as you want, different permutations, uh, and doing different things with it. Guys, thanks for watching. There's, there's one of you um, who hasn't commented, so that's fine. Um, if you've got any questions, please drop me a wee message. I hope that's been of use to you. Uh, I'm going to do a video in the next few days where I chat about chords and how we can use chords from the diminished scale. It works exactly the same way. So. Uh, maybe spend some time looking at the triads and the scale itself and next time we'll chat about chords um, and that should make a little bit more sense to you once you've got it under your, under your fingers. Um, 
Guys, thanks for watching. Um, really appreciate it, and I will see you next time. All right, thanks a lot.